Would you pray with me, please? Lord, I thank you for uh, Christmas. I thank you that you give us this chance to set aside and remember what you did for us when you came into this world. Help us to worship you more, to draw closer to you in this season. Through Christ we pray. Amen. The Christmas story, as read in Matthew, goes like this. The birth of Jesus came about this way. After his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered that before they came together that she was pregnant from the Holy Spirit. So her husband Joseph, being a righteous man, not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. Luke's account gives us great details about the story of how Jesus was born, uh, definitely from Mary's perspective. The Matthew perspective is more of Joseph's experience in the birth of Jesus. After jo- it says, after Joseph had considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and saying, um, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people <clears throat> from their sins. Uh, in a message recently, I just talked about how we can be confident that Jesus is Savior, because in the Matthew 1 passage, we see a number of reasons that for his that um, for evidence that he is a supernatural savior, and one of the evidences is that he had a supernatural announcement. His birth is announced to Joseph by an angel. Angels are one of the wonderful parts of the story of Christmas, right? Uh, on the night that Jesus is born, of course, recorded in Luke two, the angel appears to the shepherds the humble people, not to Herod, not to Caesar, but to the shepherds and says to you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who's Christ the Lord. And then an angel choir serenades them that night. Well, here an angel appears to Joseph. We can only imagine how perplexed Joseph is at this moment. He finds out, before the angel shows up, he finds out that Mary's expecting, and he's contemplating, what am I to do? Well, he could just marry her, but how could he marry somebody who has lied to him about how she got pregnant and has never come clean with it, is what he would think. That's out. He he could publicly let everybody know that Mary's pregnant. It's not my son, not my child. That would uh, defend Joseph's honor. It certainly would make, make him look better. So everybody would know he's not guilty, but it would be a horrible, shameful experience for Mary. According to the law, she could be, um, she could be executed. That probably wouldn't happen, but it would be a, a, just, she'd live in disgrace the rest of her life. He loved her too much. Didn't want that. So he had decided, I know what I'll do. I will take care of it legally, just tell the people that need to be told, won't spread anything uh, as, as I can control it, and then I'll move on with life. It would take a miracle to change Joseph's decision. And that night, God gave Joseph a miracle. By the way, uh, every once in a while, I think we just need to pray, Lord, I need a miracle. Only a miracle is going to save me here. Lord, I need you to act. I pray. I believe that you can. Now, there's a lot of confusion about angels, who they are, what they are. There's a little bit of confusion in my household right now. We have an angel on the top of our Christmas tree, and... Um, uh, Madison, my daughter-in-law, was talking to Oliver, my grandson, six-year-old, about the star that's on the top of their Christmas tree. And Oliver got really excited about a star. He said to his mom, can we put a star on our Christmas tree too? And, and, and Katie said, no, we have an angel on top of the Christmas tree. And he said, angels are boring. I want a star. 
I guess some people think angels are are boring, supposedly. You know, angels are, uh, you know, because these angels are pictures of, you know, naked babies with wings that are playing harps. Those are not angels. And angels aren't deceased human beings either. You know, you might say you weren't an angel here. You won't be an angel in heaven. Somebody, oh, now he's my angel in heaven. No, people don't die and become angels. Angels are created beings created before the creation of the world that were with God in the creation. Sometimes they're called ministers. Sometimes they are messengers. What they are for sure is they worship God and do his bidding. Sometimes they're called a heavenly host, the army of angels, in other words. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2 says, don't neglect to show hospitality, for by doing this, some have welcomed angels as guests without knowing it. Sometimes in the Bible, angels have shown up in the appearance of human beings. Sometimes in the Bible, they um, just look like regular people. And uh, and you don't know what's actually, you know, just kind of, the, for, for instance, um, in the Old Testament um, account, God is going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah for their sinfulness. Um, Jude repeats this in the New Testament, by the way. That is, you know, you remember the sins of Sodom of, uh, because of their homosexuality. And, and, and so, but before he did, he sent in a couple of angels to Lot's house, Lot, the nephew of Abraham, to bring out Lot and his family so they wouldn't be caught up in the destruction. Well, the angels get to the house and the men of the city find out about these angels and they come pounding on the door demanding for the angels to be brought out. It says in, in verse four, uh, Genesis 19, 4, the men of the city of Sodom, both young and old, the whole population surrounded the house and they called out to Lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Send them out to us so we can have sex with them. Those angels appeared as men. And so the Bible says, you never know. You may be entertaining angels and you're not aware. So show everybody hospitality. Sometimes angels show up and do spectacular, miraculous kinds of things. Billy Graham tells the story of a Reverend John Patton, a missionary in South Pacific. In South Pacific, one night he and his wife were in their missionary compound, and the compound was surrounded by hostile natives of the area. They said they were certain that the natives were going to burn down the compound, burn down their house, and kill them both. So they began to pray. All night long, they prayed, asking God to protect them from harm, save them from the situation, protect them from harm. They looked up. They got up at one point and realized the natives were gone. They didn't know why. About a year later, the chief of the native tribe who was there became a Christian. Eventually, the Patton's asked, what happened that night? Do you remember? The chief told the patents that he and his men were ready to attack, but they saw an army of giant men in shining garments with drawn swords in their hands surrounding the mission grounds. They were too fearful to attack. I don't understand angels completely, but I do understand the Bible says angels are ministering spirits. I do understand the Bible says that we are engaged in a great spiritual warfare that somehow the angels are at work on our behalf at God's direction. So God's will will be done. All of history is going to pivot on Joseph's decision that night. All of history is impacted in that moment. So God sends an angel to guide Joseph in the right way. Joseph, believe Mary. What she's saying happened is true. Take her as your wife. Adopt her son as your own. I am in this. Now, following God would not be easy for Joseph. Being the father of Jesus would mean upheaval. It would mean often being on the run. 
It would mean moving to Egypt and learning a new language because Herod wanted to kill Jesus. It would mean, you know, picking up and going back to Nazareth where he really wanted to live in the first place and relocating back to Nazareth and starting up your business, his business there again. The rest of Joseph's life would be one episode of trouble after another. Wasn't God gracious to send an angel to Joseph just when he needed. And so I think it is with us as well. We have angels are ministering spirits. We don't see how they minister all the time, but I know they do. We don't see and experience them, but I wonder sometime if we get in heaven, if we're going to see how they provided a right person at the right time, how they protected us. Have you ever been driving and there was an accident and you thought, boy, if I had been there a minute sooner, if I hadn't been delayed, I could have been in that accident. Maybe God, maybe angels affect people's, I don't know exactly what angels do, but we know they're real. They're ministering spirits and God shows up for us. And we can be confident. It doesn't mean that life is going to be easier. It wasn't easier for Joseph. But we can be confident that God will give us those ministering spirits as we need them to accomplish his will for our lives. Heavenly Father, we uh, rejoice with the angels that Jesus is born. We don't understand angels, but I thank you. I mean, but there's something profound about Christmas being a story of angels reminding us that you really are at work, even through the angels. Um, so Lord, whatever it means for the angels to fight on our behalf, I pray that your angels would fight on our behalf, that we would be strong in you and in the power of your might, that you would hear our prayers and answer. Through Christ we pray these things. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you at church soon.